Hello everyone, my name is Rajesh Kumar and I'm your DevOps SRE DevSecOps coach. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the security. Security, what we have. So security, we have a SJ group which we discuss about for the firewalls. We have IEM, that is an important one. So what is IEM? So we call it identity and access management. Now I'll put it in this way. When you start your account, AWS account, you'll become a root user. You'll become a super administrator for that account. But you know, you have to share that privileges with uh, some of your team members because one account can be used for the entire organization actually. So these are the things you are supposed to do that. So that's called IEM. So uh, where is that? So right now I'm the use root user. But if I go to the security service here, uh, let me click on the services. And here you see um, security services somewhere in the bottom security, identity, and compliance. So if you click on this category, you have uh, so many services again. Okay. Now, out of which one of the services which I'm going to use it is IEM. So where is that? Somewhere here. IEM. <clears throat> So here, if you see, uh, uh, look at my screen, all of you. So here you see, uh, this is the place where you can add users. But uh, if you have a large organization managing the users, it's like very difficult, uh, their access and all. So create a group, user group. Okay. Now, what access you are supposed to give it to user? or user group this is done by through policies so hundreds of policies are also already there but you can customize the policies also that is through json that is possible so this is uh, this user and policies basically this is for the human okay but now let's say one service wants to talk to another service for example this is the ec2 uh, EC service okay EC2 and now here you want to give the access to S3 so what to do so there's one resource there's another resource so each resources wants to also access each other so how can we do that so for that region only we have a roles so roles is basically uh, access granting to one services to another services okay so in this case you can use a role but for human being, you can use the user, user group and policies. So let me do one thing. Let me create the users first. So right now I see I have one user which has not been. So I'll delete this one. Okay. So delete. And uh, okay. now I'm going to create one user. So here create a user and this is the demo one. Okay. And then do you want to provide a console access which is the one which i'm accessing or command line only so it's up to you uh, so it's uh, uh, up to you and generate a password and let's say demo or one two three four five something like this uh, hash one two three four five next okay now you created a user and you want to add a part of the group called ec2 right now not next so this is the way you create a user okay so i'll continue now i'll create one group so i have one group which is uh, you have it uh, you know uh, already so i'll just delete this ec now this group i want to use it so here i want to go for and say demo group GRP. and if you want to add a user to the group here you can do that and here you can set up a permissions these are the policies which you have here so what policies you want to add give it ec2 here you see ec2 full access and then add it created a group so that means i created a group where i added a one user demo the one which you created previously permissions uh, EC2 full access. 
now this user and this is the policy so here you have all the policies thousands of policies are there for different different ec2 s3 you know like this if you run the services so you can read write and execute all these things you have it now if you want uh, to log in i mean let me tell you this is the console access you can log in but if you want them to log in how can you do that so here is a url so if you go to this url and access okay access and here you see i am user demo with the password demo hash one two three four five and log in so this okay so there's a password problem i use um, demo So now this you see here this user is a IEM user who's accessing your resources only and you have given access to whatever resources you can create it got it all of you yes Rajesh got it so before that you should also I um, mean always have a habit whenever you try anything just uh, delete that resources others it will be challenging so it's not a and if you want to access the root login again so access so i'll go to iem and here what i should do i should delete this user security issues demo and delete the group, group also. So, this is no need to delete it. Why? Because it's there local and given by them. So, in short, if you want to give someone else human access to your account of AWS for the project to work and many other work, then you should give this one IM access. Okay, so now next service which we have is DevOps services. Okay, so I want you to spend some time here and go for developer tools. Look at this. So here, let's go and copy this in the notepad. Okay. So here it is. Now, I'll put it in this way. Uh, as part of the DevOps course, I'm teaching you many tools, correct? Now, <clears throat> if you say, hey, I'm not happy with the, so many tools from the different, different vendors, I want to focus on one place <clears throat> for all of the DevOps requirement, only one cloud I want to use it. So either you want to use AWS cloud or Azure cloud. And in Azure, we have Azure DevOps, in AWS also we have AWS DevOps. So this is something which you have it. So now uh, these are the uh, services I will talk at the introduction level, which can be used. For example, let me put it up in a flow. So first thing you write a code, correct now? So <clears throat> understand this, uh, write a code. Now you need editor, correct? For writing a code, which editor you guys are using for my information? I'm using IntelliJ. Yeah, handle is very powerful. Okay, so here you will say, Rajesh, I am looking for my editor at internet. So what we'll do? So that is where you can use one service, which is called Cloud9. Cloud9. Okay, so you got editor. Now this is a Cloud9 services here. If you go for it, where is that? Here it is. Here. Okay, and this is the Cloud9 services, which you can write a code here, just like editor, web editor. Okay, you can create your environment, Java, Python, whatever it is you want. Okay, so just this is the one. After that coding is done, uh, where do you store the code?
Hello? When you store the code? Uh, in general, if we write in local, we, we store in local and we put in, uh, we uh, push the code to uh, GitHub or GitLab. GitHub, yes. You store in the code in the GitHub. Correct. In this case, you will go for code commit. Here it is. Code commit. So code commit is a repository just like a GitHub, the one which I taught you last time. So you store the code. After that, you want to analyze this code, correct? Analyze this code. Okay. So what we'll do? So for that, you will use one of the tool which is called X-ray. Okay. X-ray you can use. After that, you want to do the build, right? So I told you Maven and all this stuff, right? So here, code build. Okay. Now you want to, uh, you know, pack, store the package, correct? I told you artifact, right? correct? Right. So here, code the effects. Now you want to deploy the code. I taught you Ansible for it. But here we have a code deploy. Now you want to create a CI CD, CI actually. So for that, what you want, CI CD, you can set up a pipeline and all. So we have code pipeline. So you see here, many services are there. Cloud9 editor. You need a shell, right? Shell for the one which you are using cloud online. Let me show you here. This is a place you can create your own shell, cloud shell. Sometimes what happens, organizations are not allowed to do putty and all from the laptop, it, they block it most of the time. So you can come here and create a shell. This is a tiny one, uh, one machines will be created that will be chargeable again, but you can do the shell. So cloud shell, I will call it a cloud shell. Okay. So here you have, you have a cloud shell, where is that? So cloud shell. Okay, if you want to store the, Packages, code artifacts, code build, code commit, code deploy, code pipeline, you know, all these things. So, X ray analyze and debug your applications, X ray. Right? So, if you see that they have all the services which you, which you can, I know, I've been teaching you different, different tools for it. They have services actually. These are the all the paid services. But in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is everything you can do at a cloud. You don't need out come out of this AWS. Are you understanding? Yes, Rajesh, I'm getting it. Yeah. So these are the some of the additional services are there, which is for you know here AWS app config. Uh, this is for the, you know, some configuring the applications across the multiple environment. Uh, these are the new latest one. They keep adding the services like this. So this is also they recently added code star quickly develop, build and deploy applications. So that means everything, whatever you do here, build package deploy, you can do it through here also. <clears throat> this will be faster. So uh, many things are there. Uh, I would suggest you, though we all, 90% of the organizations are using the one which I taught you. But there are so many organizations nowadays, startup which is coming and they say, hey, we are not happy with all this stuff. Let's go with this cloud-based services. So that way, it is good for them. Now, if you're a DevOps, you should spend some time and at least you should remember this stuff because working with it is not that difficult. It's just like a widget. For example, let me show you one of which. Let's say code commit. I'll just search for it. Code commit. This is a GitHub repository. You know that already. See here. So you create a repository and do the push pull. That's all. See, I'm creating a repository. And clone it and push pull. How do we clone it? So here is a URL and push pull. Are you understanding all this thing? So all this thing you understand, 
it's just a managed services nothing has to be done here so now you have a repository now you want to build it this repository so code build click on it so you, here you create a project just like a jenkins you remember that you used to create a project so here you create a project select that where where is a code code commit just now i created one repository it's having nothing actually and here you where you want to build this will be chargeable i mean easy to all this and then environment specify the role and this is the code actually and then build this so these all are widget based basically <clears throat> which you can get started anytime are you understanding all of you yes right Yes, Rajesh. So um, with the code commit, right? So there are uh, you showed the options uh, for pull, push, and everything. Um, are we going to use uh, any commands to pull and push? Because uh, if we, my question is more towards the conflicts. If we get conflicts, right? Do we resolve in the same way how we do uh, in Git Bash? Like, and also everything you do in the local, right? Git, you do that in local. And uh -huh, then push right. and pull to this repository. Correct? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, got it. Uh, so I thought don't you... don't confuse yourself. It's like don't get uh, excited about this. Like this is different than GitHub. No. Okay. GitHub is hosting your repo. Code commit is also hosting your repo. Simple. Okay. The only thing is why we love GitHub because UI is great. This UI you probably will not like it. Okay. So this is the something. So all the services is in cloud also, and similar. It's not only the AWS. It's with um, uh, Azure also. They call it Azure DevOps. So Azure DevOps is more popular than AWS DevOps services. Uh, okay. So this is the one. Now let's say you are a developer, dev team. So some of the services you need more actually. What services? So basically some of the services you need more something like a notification server so you need a notification server you need a queue server okay you need a queue server and you need a smtp server smtp server so these are the primary services you need it uh, for your application so you use notification server to send notifications to app queue server you want to manage the performance and all cache and stuff like that and smtp for sending an email so you option number one you host it yourself so notification server you install ms apache mq you installed some smtp server you install sort of application you manage it or you say we don't have a time let's do that through aws so in AWS, we have all these managed services, which is notification, which we call it S, 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 N, S, S, N, S, simple notification service. Here we call it S, Q, S, and here SMTP on the setup S, E, S. Okay. These are the services which we have. So if I go to this S, Q, S, here. So it's a queue, so you can create a queue. It will be managed by AWS, you just pay for whatever you are using. So the moment you create a queue, you will get an endpoint, and this you can use it. So here there's a two algorithm for queue, standard and P4. Create a queue, there's all the little bit default and create. So queue is created so simple. Now you use it. I mean you means use the in the code, whatever you want to do that. So here this is the endpoint, and authentication will be your IM ID or whatever it is. So this is the queue. Let me delete this. Let's say same way you have a SQS or SQS. So here you have a SQS. Sorry, SQS. I was saying SNS. This is a notification. Again, you create a one thread topic and get the work done. And next one is you have SCS. If you want to set up SMTP server for sending mass email, where you can use SCS. Okay, so like that, I just said thousands of services are there for everyone. I mean, it's not a something. Uh, it's like lack of services. Many things we have it.
in compute itself you have a you see lambda so lambda is some we call it a function 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 as a service so you want to you have a code you want to run it and you only want to pay if 10 times run you pay for only 10 times not 24 by 7 so here you create a lambda create a function Just creating one simple one hello world or something hello and which this code where is the code so it's in python so python here i'm going for environment selecting and then create a function now so this is the function i created now i have to feed the code into that so you can bring your code also and uh, aws has given you some code also as part of it so this is something you can use it so here you see some code they have given it to you sample you can upload the code from the gif file or amazon s3 also sample code they have given it to you you can test and run and uh, you know, run this check this out so this is the end uh, function arn will be lambda automatically you can also trigger configurations here you can decide when it should be run and all kind of things trigger so many things options are there uh, these all options for you know saving your time and getting the work done so this we call it a functionless i mean function as a service serverless sorry serverless okay so any questions on the aws side some of the services which you are looking for it um so right now I, uh, i'm using uh, gcp um most of the activities that I work on is PubSub and uh, the Spanner database. So what are the uh, relevant terms in AWS uh, for, data, for database oh. maintenance and PubSub validations? PubSub SNS we have actually. See here. SNS managed services for PubSub. Okay. And for uh, database? For database RDS, uh, again different types of database we have. So if you are looking for the relational database, then RDS supported by Oracle, MySQL, MSQL. So here you can create a database. You see here, I'm just sh showing you Aurora, MariaDB, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, everything you can create. And if you are looking for the no no SQL, then you have to go for this one. Uh, what do you say? Uh, DynamoDB, see here, manage NoSQL database. So DynamoDB, you can compare with the Mo MongoDB or something like that. Have any issues with our channel membership? You can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries. We will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching.